This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Mustache Queen, and I'd like to offer you a trade. I will offer you one beautiful drag queen for the price of one mustache. And girl, that's the real cost of doing drag. But let me know down in the comments below which you prefer. Anywho, welcome back to or and today we're going to be reviewing episode 5 of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 8. Our queens are challenged to impersonate celebrities in the Snatch Game of Love, featuring... I forgot their names, I've got to look them up. Matt Rogers and Bowen Yang. And the runway category was Reveal Yourself! Multiple looks in one. So we'll be breaking down how each queen did in today's episode, as I saw it. Plus, we'll of course be covering all the drama surrounding the exit of Heidi in Closet from this season, and taking a look at why Candy Muse called out one of the authors over at Vulture. It's getting spicy in here. And now without further ado, in the order they hit the runway this week, first up, Jessica Wilde. And she on the runway this week is asking us to consider the age old question, which came first, the chicken? or the drag queen. Her first look as part of her reveal sequence is loosely based on the chicken, she says, from her original season in the acting challenge, which reveals to an egg dress and then finally a bodysuit with like some over easy and it looks like one cracked egg adorned across the front. And overall, I'd say Jessica did a really great job of both presenting a coherent storyline and meeting the brief, but my critiques on this look are the chicken look didn't necessarily stand on its own. Like it basically just was the feathery color cover up. And as she's coming down the runway, it was definitely one of those moments like on the All Stars 10 finale, for example, where you're like, hmm, I wonder if there perhaps perchance may be a reveal under that outfit. But act two and three of this look were definitely fully cooked and I would give this runway a sizzling. <laughs> But her snatch game tonight didn't quite fill me up. She impersonates the Puerto Rican star Iris Chacon, who she describes as the Dolly Parton of Puerto Rico. And Iris's Wikipedia says this about her. During her heyday in the 1970s and early 1980s, she toured most of Latin America, United States, Europe, and Japan. She also starred in two movies and many telenovelas, such as Yo Se Que Mentia. With the takeaway here being, she was a big television star who also did tons of interviews on talk shows. Are you very big in Los Angeles? I'm big here too. <laughs> And while I wasn't familiar with Iris before tonight, I definitely get the complete picture of who she is from just a little bit of research. And this, I think, could have been a great choice for Jessica had she just provided a little more substance to what she was doing in Snatch Game. Because she definitely did do a characterization. But was it a characterization of Iris? She kept going back to this, like, motion with her mouth and tongue where she would say something and then stick her tongue out and giggle like this, like... <laughs> and I did notice in a YouTube clip of Iris giving an interview, she definitely played with her tongue and lip muscles to create facial expressions, but it wasn't something that stood out in the extreme way that Jessica was doing in Snatch Game. For me, this performance was a rat, but at least there were maracas. And next up, Ghana Montrese, who better stop relying on that body. Just kidding, she looks great. I would never ask her to do that. Oh my God, she looks great. But the gag in her runway is she comes out almost completely revealed. And you're thinking, hmm, what else could possibly come off in this look? And well, as it turns out, everything. Her look went from scantily clad showgirl to outfit that was barely there in a sort of burlesque style performance on the runway. And I will say we are starting to see a lot of Las Vegas showgirl fantasy from Kahana, which I don't necessarily think is totally bad because she does put a fresh spin on each different look, like the burlesque elements in this outfit tonight. But I do hope moving forward, we get to see a little more versatility from her on the runway. But this look tonight, I mean, come on, find the flaw. You can't. It's hot. For as great as she looks in orange on the runway tonight, it wasn't quite her color in the Snatch Game. She was doing Coco Montrese, but like specifically Coco Montrese from the girl, you better put a little more pink in that eye, Alyssa Edwards, Coco Montrese fight, which became a meme back in the day. And I was curious to see this choice be so accepted by Rue when they're talking about Kana doing Coco in the workroom, because it was my understanding we had essentially like put a soft ban on Rue Girls doing other Rue Girls, but that may have just been for regular franchise seasons. And after this might be for All Stars as well. But as far as the visual gag of what Kahana did tonight in Snatch Game, I think she did a great job. She really captured the facial expressions and stage of makeup that Coco was in for this meme spookily well. And to Kahana's credit, the characterization of Coco in this moment 
I think was good. She captured that intensity from the fight and everything that she said, but because she did focus so much on this one part of Coco's history and who she is as a person, it ultimately limited her performance. Like there just was no real depth or personality to this performance beyond, haha, the meme, that's funny, and then it was over. And the best Snatch Game performances subvert expectations and give us something fresh. This was a but you know what's really hot? Browsing the internet safely, securely, and privately with my favorite VPN and today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Here's how it works. Download Surfshark using the link in the description of my video and then connect to any one of their 3,200 servers around the globe in just one click. And just like that, your browsing traffic becomes encrypted and anonymous, which is perfect for when you're traveling this summer and connecting to sketchy public Wi-Fi, and perfect for keeping your internet service provider from spying on everything you do. Plus, Surfshark makes browsing the web easy with their clean web ad and pop-up blocker, which can even get rid of all those annoying questions about cookies. But my favorite Surfshark feature is unlocking geo-restricted content on streaming platforms and accessing websites or content that may be blocked in your home state or country. For example, with just one click, I can surf on over to Argentina and unlock every season of RuPaul's Drag Race and Untucked, all on the same streaming platform. Plus, you can use Surfshark on all of your devices with unlimited device login. But best of all, there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description of this video to get Surfshark today and use my code BUSSY for three extra months of Surfshark for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. And next up, the pink one, James Mansfield, who on the runway comes out with this giant pink furry Muppet thing uh, that she's kind of halfway wearing on her body. And I was immediately excited when I saw this because I'm like, yes, something fresh, fun, exciting for a reveal runway. But she takes it off and reveals some Thing we've already seen from James, a pink dress. And this reveals to some corsetry, which further reveals to a bodysuit slash bikini, which has other pieces that come off in that burlesque fashion. And while the presentation of this outfit was fun, I'll say, I think there was just an obvious disconnect between the Muppet part of her runway and the rest. Like, had she gone full comedy with this runway and had, let's say, pieces of Muppet fur as the items that were part of the burlesque reveal, I think this could have been great. So as presented, I would give this like a rot. But in Snatch Game, I'd say she bent and snapped. <laughs> but I'm she did Jennifer Coolidge, who more recently I think is known in the zeitgeist as the character from White Lotus. And the thing is, was this pick for James obvious? Yes, but she absolutely nailed it. Like her drag character's voice is one small change away from Jennifer's, and her characterization as this kind of absent, ditzy blonde is perfect. She's constantly applying lip gloss to her overplumbed lips. And the substance of her jokes and volleying back and forth with Rue and the other queens was absolutely perfect. For example, she's asked to look into Kahana's eyes to tell The Bachelor what she sees, you know, like on a deeper level, and she gives the perfect surface level Jennifer Coolidge character response. I can tell she's wearing contacts. Plus, she missed no opportunity to show off her pop culture knowledge and wit. When she's asked about feet, she brings up the Quentin Tarantino preference that he has for those body parts. <laughs> can't say the F word or I'll get demonetized. And overall, I think James should be really proud of what she did here. This performance was hot. And next up, Candy Muse. Candeliza, if you're nasty. And she on the runway is giving us a little nuclear housewife into a hot red dress into a robot fantasy, which she explains on Twitter as follows. Not sure why my runway explanation wasn't left in, but my reveal runway was based on a Stepford robot wife, since the category called for two or more looks. First look, wife at home. Second look, wife out with husband. And third look, wife at the end of the night, a robot. And I'll say the Stepford robot wife isn't something particularly new, especially for the Drag Race runway. But it's an easy to get classic reference that fits into this brief well. Because you know, Stepford wives have layers like onions and ogres. I'll say across the board, these three looks were clean, cohesive, and definitely fit into that mostly monochromatic fantasy that Candy's been presenting on the runway. My only critique is that her final robot look was a little uninspired or simplified, maybe. Especially when compared to how great she looked in like the red dress. But I would give this runway a <laughs> And in the Snatch Game, she plays Renee. Graziano. It's a me, a Mario. <laughs> my quarter or one eighth Italian ancestors are rolling in their graves. And this character, Renee, is a personality who you may have seen on TV shows like Mob Wives or Celebrity Big Brother. And she supposedly, allegedly, is, I guess, a part of some bigger crime family. Who knows? I would call that TV marketing, but 
it is what it is. But concerning Kanye's performance, I would say the characterization of Renee, based on what we've seen on television, was okay. She toughened up her body language, had props like Sigs, and this character overall felt new for Candy Muse, because I think her default is to kind of just rely on her naturally funny personality. But it's not like the jokes she was spitting out were fire after fire. She was just good in Snatch Game. And her one arguably most successful response in this Snatch Game about gutting them like a fish was actually a response that we've seen on a prior Snatch Game from a very similar character when Pearl did Big Ange. Rest in peace. And the judges were right. She should have played this character way bigger. But to her credit, she definitely didn't bomb, and I would give this performance like a warming and concerning Candy calling out the Vulture, an online publication who publishes recaps of Drag Race, this is the quote that got her going. Jimbo is facing a group of competitors who simply aren't at her level of creativity or persona cultivation. If she ends up getting eliminated at some point due to her dominance, we'll be left with a UK versus the world situation. A group of queens who aren't ready to take the crown, battling it out for what is essentially second place. Scathing. <laughs> And Candy called this out, I think rightly so, writing, literally who wrote this dumbass article? How are you gonna praise one girl in the competition by putting every other queen down? Girl, you tried it tagging Vulture. And the thing about it is, yes, Jimbo is exceptional at Drag Race. She absolutely nails precisely what Drag Race demands of the competitors, and that is giving a top tier TV performance that is always funny. And therein, I think, lies the problem with a lot of Drag Race and how fans perceive it. Like, so much of the show is centered around how are you going to make it funny? And every challenge is basically some variation of how are you going to make RuPaul laugh? Of course, there are going to be some queens that are better at comedy than others. But I think it's really unfair to look at all of these queens through the lens of comedy and say that, like, Jimbo is the only one who can be crowned because ultimately drag is about much more than just comedy. We we all know if it comes down to a lip sync la la perusa for the crown. Uh, I don't know if Jimbo can win that. She's 6-0 right now. Just saying. And next up, our favorite sequence of notes, Lala and Ri. And she on the runway has a reveal. A reveal from what, though? <laughs> I'm not really sure. The presentation she gave when she first hits the runway is basically saying to me, I had a bunch of extra fabric and I'm covering myself with it and now it's gone. And like, is that a reveal? Maybe technically, but I don't think holding up fabric in front of you is a look on its own. Like, I think really this runway brief wanted the queens to give. But technicality, aside, the actual outfit she's wearing is really pretty. She's giving us a blue or purple girl. I don't know. I'm a little colorblind and the runway lights mess with my eyes. Regality. I think she looks rich, expensive. I love the bow on the back and it's playful, fun, girly, and the crystals are very opulent. She looks absolutely high. And her Snatch Game performance is also serviceable. She's doing Sukiyana, who is a personality from Love and Hip Hop, who also puts out her own rap music. And you can check out her videos on YouTube or listen to her on Spotify. She apparently also made a cameo and WAP. And in general, I would say her music kind of reminds me of Cupcake. It's explicit and comedic with that undertone of like, don't mess with me. And considering Lala was up against two of some of the best Snatch Game performances of all time, I'll just say it now, I think she held her own. I don't think she necessarily stood out, but definitely held her own. She had that confident attitude and even had some good jokes. She was asked how she felt about open relationships and she said as long as they both open their bank accounts. Like she wasn't just sitting up there trying to quote rap lyrics, she was actually thinking about the questions and then saying funny things. And the thing about Lala is she doesn't always have to say something to be funny, like she's always making a face or looking at somebody in a way that is comedic and I really enjoy her in challenges like this. I'm gonna give her a very safe hi here. But wait, I've got another trade for you. In exchange for a monthly pledge to help support the Bussy Queen channel and help me create content, pay video editors, buy makeup and wigs, etc, etc. It takes a lot to run all this craziness. You can get access to the Bussy Queen Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos like reactions to every episode that I review, and exclusive access to the Bussy Queen Queen Discord server. And you can join my Patreon by clicking the link in the description of this video. I would really love to see you there and have your support. Thank you. And next up, it's her show. We're just watching it. It's Jimbo. And over on the runway, Jimbo reminds us it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And this Like Her Snatch Game was so brilliant. Like, firstly, her walking backwards on the runway to show that she is male presenting Adam, a gag and a half. By the way, wearing a mask that she 
said is cast after her own face, which then reveals to female presenting Eve, Jimbo, so fun, so interesting, so unique. And Eve is holding a giant red juicy apple in front of her bits and bobs, the original sin. Which like when Eve took a bite of the apple, she metaphorically revealed herself and Adam's self to each other, and they realized, oh my god, we're not wearing any clothes. Reveals on reveals on reveals. This look is so fun, so original, creative, and an interesting take on the brief. It's absolutely hot. And in Snatch Games, she played America's sweetheart, Shirley Temple, who I was familiar with, but I read her Wikipedia article and found out that not only was she America's sweetheart when she was a kid and starred in all these movies and TV shows, etc., but later in life, as an adult, she became a diplomat? Like, she was literally, quoting Wikipedia, Media here, uh, named United States Ambassador to Ghana and Czechoslovakia, and also served as Chief of Protocol of the United States, whatever that is. Fun facts. Anywho, Jimbo as Shirley, phenomenal. Jimbo gave one of the best Snatch Game performances of all time, period, point blank. Like from the characterizations and physical comedy of her being this sweet little girl in the body of a giant man with a character voice that perfectly blended those two ideas to the actual joke she was belting out at every turn. As an example, she's describing her love life as a sweet trip to the candy shop and talking about how she's 100 years old and at one point is calling the bachelor a pervert and then later her performance devolves into a scene stealing insane tap dance. Like Jimbo took every opportunity and then some plus the volleys. She is so smart and quick with her wit. As usual, Jimbo stole the show and made it look easy. This performance was a hot, hot, hot. And next up, the producer herself, Alexis Michelle. And firstly, on the runway, she's giving us a little something wicked this way comes. She's the old haggard witch from Into the Woods, complete with a mask and some spooky makeup. And all of this theatrically reveals to a gorgeous black gown. I'll say the reveal itself is not only successful, but interesting in terms of the scale of what she accomplished. And this look really is what Alexis does best. It's theater. She did it well. And I think this look is hot. My only critique is I think the final look that she arrived at maybe still looked a little too haggard like in some of the makeup like she was kind of blown out and it didn't necessarily translate maybe as beautiful as she could have with the mask off mask off mask off but in the Snatch Game, she had Rue in tears. She does B. Arthur, who is famous for Maude and Golden Girls. And I'll say, even as somebody who isn't a Golden Girls stan, I really enjoyed this. She did a performance that was relatable to anyone, anywhere, anyhow. Like, if you can laugh at a joke, you can laugh at what Alexis did. My favorite joke that she told was about spending time in a men's prison and it being a year until they found out. And I think she had some really great volley moments with Jimbo, like when she described her as stinky clam chowder. And she said, well, I have the best clam in Miami perfectly demonstrating she was able to maintain that uptight air about her, but also crack, wink, wink, nudge, nudge jokes. And I will further applaud Alexis on the choice to do this character because Golden Girls is one of Rue's favorite things ever. And we have in recent drag history seen two different queens do Rue McClanahan, Elliot with two T's and Crystal, who both ended up in the bottom for these performances. But yeah, Alexis killed it. She absolutely gets a hot. And this wasn't really a surprise, but I will say I would have preferred that she were put into the first First group because having Jimbo and Alexis, two prior Snatch Game winners on the same panel in the Snatch Game of Love, just felt like way too much for one group. They kind of overshadowed Candy and Lala, and watching these two do so great in this second round really made the first round kind of forgettable. And finally, shh. Do you hear that? It's the sound of rats peeing on cotton. It's Heidi in Closet. And look, the writing has been on the wall for Heidi for weeks now. Like, she has literally been telling us in subtle ways, okay, not so subtle ways on Twitter, that she's gonna be leaving the competition after she told us she was gonna be leaving the competition in Untucked from like episode two. We knew it was gonna happen, we just didn't know when. But before she left, she did do a Snatch Game performance as Blackbeard, who's a famous, infamous English pirate. And Heidi's Snatch Game performance was interesting in that she had substance, but really lacked characterization. Like I did not believe in any way she performed that she was a pirate, much less a pirate with such a weighty name like Blackbeard. Like I don't even think she gave us a single R or matey or me booty or anything like that. This was literally just Heidi in a pirate Halloween costume. That said, she was funny because Heidi is funny. I like when she was asked to describe her feet and she's talking about the peg leg and she was really great, I'll say, at volleying between the different queens on the panel. The problem though was that they couldn't really keep up with her. She would make shady little comments about like Kahana needing a refund on her joke or passing her the treasure map to find the joke or say things about Jessica being cross-eyed when she said she was ugly. And all that was super enjoyable to watch. She just 
definitely was not acting like a pirate, but I would give this a safe hot, and I definitely don't think she would have been put in the bottom for this. Let's talk about her exit, which, as I mentioned, she has been preparing us for now for weeks on Twitter, and I think that probably was in part to soften the blow on the fans. This is a huge decision to leave RuPaul's Drag Race, especially with the new stakes of like $200,000. But as Ru pointed out to her in the workroom at the beginning of this episode, she has yet to win a challenge, much less place high. And that's gotta hurt, I think, considering how much Heidi has really elevated her drag and brought a new self to this competition. Like there's been multiple instances, particularly I think the ball, where hello, like can we at least get a top placement? Like even if they weren't gonna give her the win that week, she needed some recognition and she was getting none. And it all comes to a boiling point in the workroom this episode when Kahana calls Heidi out for antagonizing is the word she uses her during Snatch Game, specifically referring to things like Heidi passing her the treasure map to find the joke. And Heidi rightly so, I think, defends these things that she does during Snatch Game. Like this is very standard fare. The queens as their characters are supposed to be interacting with each other and at times maybe even trying to sabotage each other or find areas where they might be weak and not able to properly volley and tell a joke. It was just that Gahana, self-admittedly lacking confidence in this area of performance, wasn't able to accept this as a friendly volley and read it more as friendly fire. So there's that. And then there's the messy Jimbo Candy Alexis triangle of drama, where Candy calls out Heidi for telling Jimbo that Candy is gunning for her, which allegedly all happened after the cameras were cut one evening. Apparently, Candy had said to Heidi that as soon as Jimbo's in the bottom, she's gonna send her home, which apparently was something Alexis had overheard because she's asked like, hey, do you remember this happening? And the weird thing is that at first she says yes, and then she says no. I don't remember her saying that, and that was strange. But then we also have Candy saying that she never said that. And everyone in the room, and we as fans watching the show, were all just like, what's the truth? Because what you see is not always the truth. But regardless of whatever the truth may be about what was or was not said, it's clear Heidi here is feeling very everyone against Heidi. Like, it looks rough for her, and she gets emotional, and she says this has become very ugly, it's not something I want to be involved in, and she leaves the workroom. She then has some little side conversations with Lala and Candy, they kind of try to convince her to stay, and she's like, no, I need to go find my peace and happiness. All this money, not worth it. And after the episode aired, Heidi tweeted this out. Please don't send no hate. Instead of sending negativity, choose to spread love and peace. There's plenty of ways to show love and support. And Candy on Twitter was also shutting down people who were being negative online. A Twitter user had written to Candy, you're a liar. You got exposed by two people in your alliance that you're a liar. Jimbo called you out about what he didn't say after you claimed he did, and then Heidi called out Candy for what was for what she said about Jimbo and then Alexis straight to play both sides. Trash human. To which Candy simply replied with a selfie of her, Jimbo, and Heidi looking beautiful in the mirror, writing, um, anyways. And Kahana also cleared up the apparent drama that was happening there between her and Heidi on Twitter, writing, me and Heidi have been and are good. I'm not the reason she wanted to leave. She already decided to go before that episode. I'm warning you now, I'm not the one to play with in these comments. Y'all think you have anxiety. No threat, but you've been warned. And yes, I'll echo what all the queens are saying and what I always say in my videos, don't send hate to anybody online, there's no point, just send something nice to the ones you like and call it a day. Cause does it suck that Heidi left the competition? Yeah, it really is not a fun viewing experience, especially as a Heidi and Closet fan myself, but it was a decision that she made on her own for her own peace and happiness, and we have to respect that. And this decision was not made lightly, I would speculate, especially considering the prize money opportunity this season and the fact that she spent a lot of money on her runway packages and canceled a lot of gigs to be there. She'd actually written that All Stars cost her $40,000 and $60,000 in canceled gigs. Gagaroni macaroni. Gagatrondra. The gag of the season. And with that, let's let Heidi worry about Heidi and move on to the outcome of this episode. The win goes to Jimbo, which is not at all a surprise. But this is Jimbo's third win in this competition and second consecutive. Like we are just five episodes in and we've got a clear front runner, which I'll point out reveals yet another issue with the lip sync assassin format. Because when you've got one queen dominating a competition based solely on their challenge performance, you lose the nuance of the umbrella of talents that drag queens have, as I mentioned earlier. Or 
don't have. Because let's say another queen had been chosen as a top all-star of the week and Jimbo had to lip sync against them to properly claim this episode's win. Well, we've seen Jimbo's lip sync track record and it's not great. Pretty much any other all-star probably could beat her in a lip sync here. And using that top two format would raise the stakes and give other queens a chance to shine when maybe they did good but not great in the challenge that week. Instead, we again have Jimbo going into a lip sync, which she does not win against Jasmine Kennedy. <laughs> and the thing is like, it's what we expect now. And it's getting kind of funny at, at this point. Jasmine though, I will say was truly a delight in the lip sync this week. She brought a poise and composure to all of her dancing that just made what she did look completely effortless. Like she would just be busting a little move here, a little move there, and then out of nowhere, jump into a spin, twirl, split, boom, bam. It was really crazy. She did absolutely amazing. And in result, Jimbo loses their sixth lip sync across all Drag Race franchises. But concerning the bottom two, Jessica Wilde and Kahana Montrees, those are picks for those slots I absolutely agree with tonight. But the happy twist of the episode is nobody goes home because Heidi has already left. So that leaves us with our hottest hots for the week. And on the runway, I'm going to give it to you, Jimbo. And in Snatch Game, Jimbo. It's the Jimbo Show. And I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hots over at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. And they too voted for Jimbo and Jimbo. And I want to give one final thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark, who can help you unlock geo-restricted content on streaming platforms and keep you browsing the internet safely, securely, and privately. Don't forget you can download Surfshark using the link in the description of my video and use code BUSSY to get three extra months of Surfshark for free. And I'm gonna give an extra special shout out to Sonia Dawson, who's just ruined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Ashley Brungard, Dorothy Hall, Fuck, Leisha, Frankie, Jeffrey Steenberg, Laura, Asset, Louis Labrador, Matthew Burns, Matto, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Tyler, Hendricks, MD, Billy, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier at Patreon.com. See you later. Love ya. Bye.